Today, I took one trade and made over $1,500 on the day, and the goal of this video is very simple. I'm just going to give you the entire strategy for free so that you could do the exact same thing. Sounds good? Let's go. All right, this is the exact position that I took today that made me over $1,500 on the day, and it was so simple. And as you guys can see, this position went straight from entry all the way to take profit. Zero issues, zero drawdown. This was a super smooth position, so I need you to learn this strategy, and I need you to learn it well. So to learn how to take positions like this using my exact order block strategy, you need to understand that there's a three-step process. Number one, you need to stick to the trend. So if we take a look at QQQ here, we need to know what the market is doing on a daily and hourly time frame. That way, we can know exactly when to take positions and when to hold off on taking these positions. So first things first, we need to see when trend will break, when trend will continue, and know what's going on on these higher time frames. So for example, if we're taking a look at the daily here, you'll see that if we break this right here, we have a pretty strong chance of continuing to the downside. And that's exactly what we did. We actually gapped below this entire line, which gives us a lot of confidence in that downside move. Same thing if we go over to the one hour, right? We need to know what the trend looks like. We know that we have ourselves a lower high here, but we continue to create higher lows. We continue to create higher lows. We continue to create higher lows. And so when we snap this higher low to the downside, this gives us a very, very confident understanding that we're most likely going to head to the downside for the rest of the day. And this is what's known as a change of character, right? So we need to make sure that we're on the right side of the market before we start making these decisions. Because if you just decided to take a position without knowing what's going on, you're most likely going to try to go long at one of these points. And you're not going to realize that we actually shifted trend a long time ago allowing us to get into a position like this and taking it all the way to the downside and continuing that downside trend. So that's exactly the first thing that we did today was focus on the trend and know exactly what's going on, right? And that's exactly what I did today during my position. I knew from a macro perspective that we were most likely going to continue this trend to the downside based on the fact that we had already snapped these lows. So if we're taking a look here, we've got ourselves a higher low. Well, we've got ourselves a lower low creating a higher low here, creating another higher low here, creating another and then we start to kind of fizzle out here, which is giving us the idea that we might continue to the downside. Once we come by and snap these higher lows around this part, we know that we're most likely going to continue to the downside. This is where we create our first lower high, giving us the idea that the trend will continue to the downside. So make sure you know where the trend is at based on the position that you're taking. If I look here on the five minute, which is where I take my entries, you can tell that I already knew based on what was happening on this chart that this was gonna continue to drop, right? All I needed was more confirmation to get to that point. Now, number two, and the thing that you most likely wanted to know the most, which is you need to find order blocks. These are areas of liquidity that are resting that allows us to know exactly where the stock market is most likely going to go. First thing you need to make sure is that you are not on regular trading hours. You wanna be on electronic trading hours. You don't wanna be on regular. That way we can factor in some of the post-market and pre-market, which actually does give us a little bit more clarity on what the market's actually doing. Next, we need to go to the one hour time frame. We're going to start off on the one hour time frame and then drop to the 15 minute afterwards to kind of clean up some of our order blocks. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I find large moves within the market that tend to break structure or change character. So for example, here we see that massive change of character that I was talking about before, right? And we've also got a nice break of structure here, which does mean that we could have liquidity resting in this area. Now, what do I mean by liquidity resting in these areas? It's probably what you're thinking right now. Essentially, what I mean by that is that every time we have one of these massive moves, we tend to leave behind a lot of people. How many times have you been trading and you try to enter a position and it just ends up getting absolutely blown away? You don't end up getting an entry in that position and then you have to cancel your order and re-put that order, right? Well, typically what tends to happen with people that have millions and millions and millions of dollars is someone will have a $5 million order resting in this area and what happens? They don't get filled. So what's most likely to happen when we come back up to that area where this guy has his $5 million resting order? Well, it's probably going to then fill. And since his order is so large, it's probably going to cause the market to have a similar to reaction to what it did last time. That is exactly how order blocks work. You need to think of it literally by the way that it sounds. Order blocks, right? It's a block full of orders. And of course, guys, I did take this live with my mentorship students because they sit in on pretty much every single trade that I take. And I take it live with them. I show them the breakdown of the strategy. I show them everything right in front of their face. So if you feel like you're missing out on that and you want to have a one-on-one -on -one mentor to actually boost your progress and help you get further in your trading faster, 
Go to the first link in the description. It's going to say simplyoffersonacademy.com. That's where you should go if you want to learn a strategy that will help you and have a one-on-one -on -one mentor sitting by your side every single day. Now we got to know how to actually draw the blocks. So first thing you want to do, like I said, is find a big move that tends to break structure or change character. As you can see right here, we've got ourselves a lower low and we've got a failure to continue lower, which ends up resulting in a change of character right here, right? We start to push towards the opposite direction. So there's most likely going to be resting liquidity in this area. Now to use these orders, blocks, what we need to do is we need to find the candle that is before that massive move that is in the opposite direction. So in this case, we see this massive bullish move here. So you want to find the last bearish candle before that massive move. And as you can see, this is the last bearish candle right here. So this candle is what we want to focus on because right at this point, there were a lot of orders that did not get filled. Now for a bullish order block, what you need to do is you need to have the bottom of the wick to the top of the candle body highlighted. So you're gonna leave out this top wick here. You're just gonna have the top of the candle body to the bottom of that wick down there. And you're gonna extend this all the way out. And one thing you're gonna note immediately is that as soon as we have that drawn out, you see these very convenient placed retests on the order block as soon as we break through it. And for a bearish order block, let's say we have this massive move right here all the way to the downside. You just wanna take the bottom of the candle body to the top of the wick. So in a bearish order block, you're leaving out the bottom wick. So for a bullish order block, you leave out the top wick. Bearish, you leave out the bottom. So we've got that 15 minute order block down there. Now the next order block that we're gonna find is gonna be this area where we break structure and continue all the way up to create a new higher high. So I use the very last candle before we have that massive move and it looks something like this. As you can see, we've got this bullish move. We wanna leave out the top wick. So we have ourselves a bullish order block. And now that you actually have the blocks on your chart, you need to then wait for a reaction, which is step three. So today, what we did was we went over to the five minute and the two minute. We waited for a reaction at the order block and we took it. Now, what reactions are you most likely going to get? Well, when we are at an order block, we're probably gonna do one of three things. We're probably going to either bounce, we're going to break through and retest to continue, or we're going to break through, fail the move, retest and continue up. Those are the three things that are going to happen. And so in today's position, we came through, we retested and we continue down. And it's pretty much picture perfect. So as you can see, those are the three reactions. And every time you have an order block, there is a very large chance that one of these three things is going to happen. So for today's position, we did exactly that. We broke through the bottom of this order block here, coming all the way back up to retest this point. Now, I will say I did have a pretty aggressive entry. I entered as soon as we retested this order block here and failed it to continue down. The safest entry is probably if you would have broken lows so that we can see an actual candle continuation to go lower. But I like the move regardless so much because of how beautifully we rejected this order block here and with how much volume we've had to the downside that I just knew that this was going to work. So I locked in a position right here as soon as we rejected and started pushing downwards on this red candle. And my stop loss always usually goes above the order block. But for this specific position, the order block was a little too large. And I was also trading NQ, which as you know, could probably lead up to maybe a 200 or 300 tick stop loss, which I just didn't want. We can't have our stop loss like that, right? So we put it above the halfway point of the order block. Why would I do that? Well, if we were to break through the bottom of this order block, chop a bunch or whatever, and then continue to push up over the halfway point of this order block, I would think that there's not really that much of a chance that this continues to the downside, right? Because if this has enough strength to push over the halfway point, it probably has enough strength to continue pushing, especially since we were in this massive downtrend this entire time. I then had to drop my stop loss even more because I knew that the risk wasn't necessarily there for me. So what I did was I entered this position and as soon as we started to see a continuation down, I then dropped my stop loss above highs. So this was actually a pretty risky move from me because I knew for a fact that we could come up and retest this and continue down. But like I said before, if we have a move that is so strong and so willing to push through the order block that way, and we come all the way back up to retest it, if we retest it three or four times, I have a feeling that we're just going to break to the other side, right? This was a very strong move that should present a continuation. But of course, if it pushes all the way over the order block, it's probably not going to have that continuation. So very quickly, I ended up dropping my stop loss above these highs so that when this was in the green, if it happened to flip all the way back up and break these highs, I would be out of the position. Now, luckily for us, 
That didn't happen, and we pretty much stayed in the green this entire position. So we ended up chopping down a little bit, breaking these lows, and absolutely flying. Now, what I did for my exit was very simple. I had a second order block that was placed around this area, which was a bullish order block. And what I wanted to do was I put my 8 EMA on my chart. So this was actually the 8 EMA and not the 9 EMA. And what I did was essentially just wait for the EMA to be broken on the other side. So as you can see, we have this massive move here. As soon as this 8 EMA was broken with a confirmation of us rejecting this order block right here, because if this went down and then came up and rejected, maybe we could have held it. But knowing that there was a reversal candle here is a strong likelihood that if we break this, we'll continue to the upside. So I went ahead and exited that position as soon as we broke this high. Now, you might be asking, oh my God, how upset are you that you didn't catch this entire thing? I don't care. It's not that important to me because what's more important to me is that I took an A plus trade and an A plus setup and this was picture perfect. Copy my strategy. It'll make you money. Bye.